Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to examine Catherine Crick's defense video, so let's jump right in. And special thanks to King of Resurrection for sharing this. In this 49-minute video, Catherine Crick attempts to defend her words and practices, and at first I was ready to give her support for some of the things she was saying. That is until I rewatched the video she was referring to, that exposed some things she was saying to a prophet she addresses as Baba. First, let's start out with one true thing she says. There's been videos that have been that put out, made by people, um, not with love one bit. She's right. All channels that are doing discernment should be doing it with love. 1 Corinthians is clear that if what we do is not in love, it's useless. Unfortunately, there are many discernment channels that are laughing at people, calling them names, and just making fun of their false teaching. Do you really think God's thinking, way to go my child, that false prophet really is a Fruit Loop dingus. You nailed that dingbat to the wall. Your reward is waiting. Not a chance. When our works are tried, as we see in 1 Corinthians 3, some will be burned up while others will receive reward. The labels used may be true, but we should be careful of how we speak about others. Where Catherine is wrong, though, is that most discernment channels make these videos because we care about people that are being deceived by these false teachers. We're not doing it as an attack on the person. There's no name-calling or colorful adjectives being used to describe these people. It's simply showing from Scripture how what they are teaching, saying, or doing does not match up to God's Word. She seems to have a different opinion on this, though. There have been videos that have been made about me, um, made with ill intentions. Obviously a strategy of the devil because the devil is very angry. Because the enemy is trying to bring confusion, doubt, and division. And he's trying to, like, um, try to stop the revival fire and people are on fire for revival right now. People are excited about what Jesus is doing. People are ready to run full force and the devil's trying any way to see how he can at least like um, stifle the fire a bit. Yes, the devil is out to destroy anything of God, but Jesus also came to bring division as we read in Luke. Division of those who really love him and those who don't. And in fact, we are told to expose false teachers because they are leading the flock astray. So he comes with these sneaky strategies to just like see if someone will open the door and like hear what he has to say, right? Hear lies, hear um, distorted truth, twisting. And the goal is to get one to be confused, to get one to like step back and be like, oh, am, I, am I being deceived? You know, that's, that's the devil's aim. And if you are opening the door to a video you can tell is made by, inspired by the enemy, it's just like, it's kind of dangerous. Yes, the devil comes to make us doubt God, like in the Garden of Eden. Did God really say that? But it's the Holy Spirit in us that causes us to say, oh, am, I, am I being deceived? So the Holy Spirit is what makes us feel uncomfortable when we hear or see things that don't line up with the Bible. It's called discernment. But if we're questioning her, it must be from the devil. She goes on to give a comparison and relates us to Pharisees. We hear this a lot from people that support false teachers. It's kind of like... um. Jesus in his ministry, you know, his disciples, they were so blessed by his ministry. They were experiencing miracles. They experienced nothing but blessings through the ministry of Jesus. Peace and joy, the fruits. And then imagine if, if they got coffee with a Pharisee, you know, like knowing how this Pharisee felt about Jesus, even though the, the person themselves experienced nothing but God through Jesus, nothing but blessing. It's, you know, kind of obvious that it would be a little bit dangerous to sit down with the Pharisee because the fair, you know, you know the Pharisee's heart and you know the Pharisee is going to try to plant these seeds like, you know what, I think you're actually being deceived. I think that Jesus is actually using 
um, demonic powers. And I'm going to show you the scripture now. This is what the Pharisees did. Look how Jesus is going against the scripture here and here and here. These are all the reasons why. You sit down with a Pharisee and at the least it's just going to cause a kind of spiritual war. You know, you can be victorious, but it's dangerous. It'd be, it'd be, the best would be to not sit down with a Pharisee, but instead listen to advice from people you trust. Only take in advice from people you trust. Don't listen to random people talking, giving you advice about someone or a move of God or or a ministry or where God don't listen to a random person. So what this translates into is don't listen to YouTube channels that are calling out false teachers because they're Pharisees. Only listen to people you trust. Like who? Her or people that support her? How about this? Listen to what everyone has to say, teach or do and compare it to God's word. And if it doesn't match up, then they shouldn't be listened to. She says people are making videos about her and Satan is using them for this reason. The devil is very angry, obviously, of what's happening now. Um, demons have been able to hide for a long time. And not only are demons being cast out, but the devil's being exposed. People are like flying far now, like knowing, oh my goodness, Jesus can set me free. Jesus can set me free. I don't have to live with this. The devil is being exposed big time. The truth's coming out. And obviously, the devil is not happy about that one bit. So demons have been able to hide for a long time, but now they're being exposed. Well, this is not true. These deliverance ministries are a very new thing that focus on casting demons out of Christians, and that's not even biblical. And some channels have shown the same people being used at her deliverances and other people's like Daniel Adams and Bob Larson. But here's her explaining the main focus of her video defending herself. So anyways, in these videos, um, they, they found this video from several years ago of words that I had spoke at a church in Africa and they took it out of context what I was saying they took it out of context what I was saying and they twisted it so they they showed a video of words I spoke and then they put their own story spin twisting on what I said so I want to share with you what I said and to clarify and to share my heart behind it. They twisted their story, so I want to give you the truth. So let's give her that chance. And if you watch the full video, it's very much like Bill Johnson doing damage control as we'll see. With that being said, another truthful thing she said, yet out of context, was this. Um, also, also, the, in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 20, it says, To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. This is Apostle Paul speaking. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law. So as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am free from God's law, but under Christ's law. So as to win those who ha not having the law. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means, I might save some. Do you know that God calls us to not be stubborn and prideful in our culture and our ways? But do you know that God calls us to be respectful to other people's cultures? out of love in order that we may win some souls. I will leave the full video below, but she goes on for about 10 minutes explaining why some of these things she did was to honor their culture. And that's where I thought, okay, I can understand that. 
Just like people asked why Kenneth Copeland was wearing that outfit for his sermon in Africa. I assumed it was just a cultural thing. Just like when I spoke at a church in Mindanao, they put this strange thing around my neck showing that you are a special guest. And I didn't feel comfortable being made to stand out like that, but it was their church and it was their thing. And of course, we would never respect other cultures' ways if it went against God's ways. We don't bow down to a statue of Buddha to win the Buddhist. But after Catherine said that about the culture, I wanted to give her a pass on a couple of things. The problem is that, as she said, the scripture she read is about winning souls, and that's not why she was at that church. She was there being ordained as an apostle, which she's not. This prophetic word that was released to me, you're called to be an apostle, I didn't get any dreams or visions that I was called to be an apostle. Now God does speak that way, yes, but I'm saying in my case, God chose to move in that way. No, he didn't, and this man has no authority to do this, yet he did. I release this anointing upon you, Apostle Catherine, as this anointing will help you. Why is she falling? She hasn't even been anointed yet. To lift her up again will help you to um, do what you please to make this anointing known. This is another gift to make this anointing known. Receive this anointing now. This is different. You got that right. This is different. This is ridiculous. I want to release this anointing upon you, Dana. That you are God's appointed apostle from today. You are an apostle of God from today. Wherever you will be, the apostolic anointing will flourish with the giftings of the prophetic giftings. I want to release this anointing from today. Receive it. He has no power to do such a thing, and he goes on to anoint all those ladies, but we'll skip that. First, we're going to hear her so-called salvation testimony. Almost five years ago this September, I had recently just encountered the power of God for the first time, and my life was changed forever. I um, was a lukewarm Christian my whole life. I knew Jesus my whole entire life, but I never encountered the power of God. Therefore, I like wasn't in love with Jesus, and I was more in religion, and I had one foot in the world. I would party. I was trying to live the double life and go to church twice a week still, and I loved God, but I was trying to live the double life. So first off, nobody knows Jesus their entire life, and you don't love God if you're trying to live a double life like she said. That's proof that you don't love God. And I wanted to surrender. I didn't want to be lukewarm. I wanted to be on fire, but I was just like stuck. And the reason why I was stuck is because I hadn't met Jesus yet. So I could then fall in love with him. So then he was irresistible. And it was just like, yes, Jesus, have my life, you know, my, from my heart instead of a, a surrender with your efforts. So I encountered the power of God for the first time. Um, uh, uh, almost six years ago this fall. Six years ago this fall. Wait, didn't she just say almost five years ago? Almost five years ago this September, I had recently just encountered the power of God for the first time. I encountered the power of God for the first time um, uh, uh, almost six years ago this fall. Six years ago this fall. Almost five years ago this September. Almost six years ago this fall. And I witnessed demons cast out, people be healed, um, encountered prophetic ministry, was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And um, just in that one moment of encountering the power of God, my spiritual eyes opened up to how amazing Jesus is and how worthy he is of my surrender. And I surrendered to Jesus as soon as, as I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, one month after encountering the power of God on January 7th, 2016. 
So it sounds like she went to a Bethel meeting, saw some fake demons cast out, maybe a leg lengthening trick, heard some people babbling false prophecies, and got all revved up in the excitement. But here's the key that doesn't make any sense. She just said, I surrendered to Jesus right after I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, one month after encountering the power of God. And I surrendered to Jesus as soon as, as I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, one month after encountering the power of God. And I surrendered to Jesus as soon as as I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. You don't get filled or baptized in the Holy Spirit before you are saved and then surrender your life to God. Whether you are someone that believes there is a second baptism of the Holy Spirit or not, we can agree that this does not happen before you are saved, or as she puts it, surrendered her life to Jesus. But soft music, big smiles, and enthusiasm can sell this story if you're not listening carefully. And this encountering God happened one month before this, so it was simply, as I said before, witnessing a gathering with a bunch of energy and most likely counterfeit manifestations. I surrendered to Jesus, everything, and I've been on fire ever since. And since that day, um, my biggest passion has been for other people to encounter the power of God. I had been a Christian my whole life and just yearned to be surrendered, yearned to be on fire, yearned to have the more of Jesus. And it wasn't until I was um, 24 when I first encountered the power of God. And I had so many Christian friends and family in my life. So I knew that like all of them pretty much had never encountered the power of God. And I could see that they were this, in the same place I was. So my biggest passion became, I want people to have the encounters with Jesus that I had. I want people to encounter prophetic ministry and receive freedom and healing and see who Jesus really is. That became my biggest passion. Her passion had nothing to do with people realizing they were sinners in need of a savior, but to experience signs and wonders like we see everybody chasing in the new apostolic reformation. My biggest prayer, my biggest prayer. Well, God answered my prayer <laughs> in a more direct way than I meant. Um, my prayer was really just like, let people have the same experience as I did, Jesus. Let them encounter you. Not like, use me with your power. That was never my prayer. <laughs> but um, nine months after I first, after I surrendered to Jesus fully, when I really surrendered my dreams even, um, I went to a conference in Los Angeles and at that conference, a prophet was ministering there. And this prophet's name is Prophet Jor Davy. And he's from Tanzania East, Tanzania, East Africa. And that's who she talks about next. So this prophet, after I saw this whole, this amazing move of God, like I've never seen before, and I was in awe. This prophet then prophesied to me, God has actually called you to be an apostle and to reach the nations and an apostle of Jesus Christ. And I know many of you know my story, so I, I won't go in depth, but long story short, I didn't want that. I wanted to be a singer. Public speaking was my biggest fear, my biggest weakness. When, so when I heard that word, I was like, what about music? I was hoping you'd prophesy about music. <laughs> didn't she just say she surrendered everything to Jesus, even her dreams? After I surrendered to Jesus fully when I really surrendered my dreams even. There's so much conflicting information in this video, and now she'll speak about God's calling with this man from Tanzania. Um, so as time went on, God revealed to me that this man of God, Prophet Jer Davy, God wanted him to be my, my mentor, my covering, because that is important. That is important to have a spiritual covering, to have a mentor so you can grow and learn? No, that wasn't God putting you under this false teacher that thinks he has the authority to ordain female apostles of God. We'll see more shortly. This man of God, I honor him. I honor him. He, God has used him to bring me closer to Jesus than ever before. This man considers Catherine's church to simply be a branch of his church. 
through my branch in Los Angeles to go around the world and once I touch your country never plan to stay at home because you will surely know that Jesus has visited your city Jesus has visited your country this guy's got a lot of nerve saying something like that but Catherine seems to agree this man of God I honor him I honor him he God has used him to bring me closer to to Jesus than ever before. Um, I've just experienced the love of God through him so much as God uses vessels. He is so much like Jesus, like I hadn't seen in my life an example of Je like someone like Jesus. Well, he sure seems to think he's powerful as he anoints another lady. Once people see you and you touch them, they will instantly be healed. And some of them will bring you testimonies that ever since you touched me or you spoke something, I was healed. I release this anointing upon your life. So he has the power to release an anointing that this lady can touch people and they'll be healed. Only God himself can do that. But she believes this. And I'm so grateful that I had an example and someone to help me learn and grow and to walk in the power of God and to receive, to receive anointing from as, as um, anointing comes through impartation and it can be through different vessels of God. God has different ways, but I've been able to receive from there as well. There's no Bible verse to support this. She really loves this guy though. Also, I never discovered the love of Jesus so much until it was through the office of a prophet and it happened to be through Prophet Jordan before me. She's got this guy on a pedestal and this is her response video to people exposing her. So let's get to her justifying why she said the strange things she did. She says this. So, I spoke words that were childish because I was a child in the Lord. Apostle Paul says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish, childish things. This is 1 Corinthians 13, 11. So remember, this was just about a year, a year or so after I had first encountered the power of God. So though I was a Christian my whole life, I was a baby in the Lord. There she goes again, saying that she was a Christian for her whole life. Anybody who says that doesn't understand salvation. Nobody can say that. We could say, I thought I was a Christian my whole life, but it wasn't until I was born again that I realized I was just going through the motions and wasn't really saved. And there's a big difference between being a child in Christ and saying the things she's trying to justify because she was just young in her walk. Here's one. And I went to this church and I was honoring this man of God. I was not glorifying him. I was honoring him as God calls us to give honor where honor is due. And so it was this moment of honoring him. And my heart was to honor him. My heart was not to glorify him in any way. I've never glorified any man. I've only ever given glory to Jesus, even when I was a child in the Lord. But in that moment, I spoke like a child. I spoke, the words came across, not what my heart was. And so what I meant to say, what I meant to say was the world will not know the real Jesus until they encounter the power of God, until they encounter prophets as well as all fivefold ministries. They won't know the fullness of Jesus. That's what I meant to say. But what I said was, and I am denouncing these words right now before you because the words I said do not reflect my truth now. And we're just spoken as a child in the Lord and speaking as a child who's so enthusiastic and excited. Like a child says to their dad, you're a superhero. A child can say, you're the best 
he, my dad's the best dad in the world. He's way better than your dad. A child can say that. They don't mean it with ill intent. They don't mean to glorify their dad. It's pure. That's how I was speaking, <laughs> but it comes off, it comes off to people through this video like I was glorifying a man. So I'm denouncing these words right now because I want you to be to know for real my heart and where I stand. So it said, so the words I said was, they will not know the real Jesus unless they know you. I said that to him, to Prophet Jer Davy. I denounce those words now. She can denounce those words all she wants, but that's not baby Christian words. Nobody would say to another human being, they will not know the real Jesus unless they know you. She goes on to explain why she said many other things, but it's all the same excuse and talk about being a baby Christian. So let's look at the clip where she said that and many other things, and you decide with the amount of times she's addressing him as Baba, if this is a baby Christian's words or if she was praising this guy. Baba, we want to be used to reach all of the people of Los Angeles to bring them to you. There's so many people hurting in LA. There's so many people hurting and across America. And we want God to use us to reach them and to bring them to you so that they may be healed and delivered and be directed into God's will for their life and for that so that they may receive what we have received. We 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 don't want to keep this to ourselves. We want to share this with the world. And all of this joy that you see in all of us and this transformation. It is only because of you, Baba. Ni kwa sababu yako, Baba. We would be nothing without you. Tunge, tunge we know and recognize that you hold the keys for America and only you. Hallelujah. We want, as John the Baptist declared, there's someone greater than me coming. We want to be used in that apostolic way. We want God to have people's eyes be open to the words we're speaking that they may hear and come to this conference and to this ministry and receive you receive the real jesus and receive Alleluia. from the real jesus through you glory to god we give ourselves we lay down ourselves we surrender and submit to you that God would use us to serve you and to help fulfill your vision. We plant this seed at your feet, Daddy, for God to have our way with us to serve you. We want the world to know you. We want you to be famous. So that the real Jesus, who is full of love and power, may be known. They will not know the real Jesus unless they know you. He's choosing to use you. For the world to see him and to know him. Asante sana, Baba. We love you so much. Asante sana for being our father. We love you. She continues to justify all those things as baby Christian words in her video and denounces them. But I think it's clear that it's damage control and wasn't a simple slip of the tongue or a cultural thing. We'll finish off with one last clip. So for you to have the prophet of prophets as your leader, I consider you the most favored people in the world. 
to be under daddy in this anointing, in this ministry, is to be highly favored beyond all of the people in America with riches and fame and wealth. And I think, I think that you have had daddy for a long time. I think it might be time for you to share him with for America. Daddy, I wanted to ask you something. I was wondering if on behalf of Pastor David and I and the Jordavi International Ministry in America, if I could sow a seed for the ministry to grow and the anointing to flow in America. This is idolatry to say that they are the most favored people in the world because they're under the leading of this man. But the part calling him daddy or baba, which means daddy in their language, was apparently a cultural thing, and putting the offering at his feet was also a cultural thing, whereas the other videos made it look like she was kissing his feet like some of the people in this congregation do. But I hope that if you follow this lady and her phony deliverance ministry, you can see that her testimony has many holes in it, as do her reasons for saying the things she said in her response video. We're going to leave it here for today, but as always, feel free to leave your thoughts and comments below. And until next time, take care and God bless.